something that I found so interesting. We had ancient rulers, you know, how sometimes we can get caught up in ancient Africa and, oh, we had this ruler, that ruler. But it's like, no, man, we had ancient civilizations right on this very grounds that we're standing on. And one person, man, in particular, his name, if I butcher it, correct me immediately. I think it's pronounced, uh, is it Saturiona? Saturiona. So it's either called, it's different spellings because you had the French was here, the Spanish was here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's different people speaking different languages. So sometimes yeah. you will see Satariwa, Satariona, mm. yeah. you know, different spellings. But for, sure. for the most part, it sounds like Satur something. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah, man. But yeah, and the, to hit on that, man, that's not yeah. even ancient. Mm. That's the that's fifteen sixty two facts yeah facts <laughs> facts facts yeah so seeing, that's just like crazy bro yeah man uh seeing him and you know just seeing how much a uh, political influence that he had and being over multiple chiefdoms right and knowing that he was known as like the Christian slayer and that he was this powerful <laughs> right man a melanated person why was Satriona so important to Mississippian culture why was he so important. Well, I would think I, I say that uh, it's many of them that's really mm -hmm. important because it's not For just sure. Saturiona. Saturiona had an enemy mm. that uh, that was named a lot of Atina. Mm. And he was supposedly like older and was in charge of more chiefs than Saturiona was. I think Utina had like 50 different chiefs and villages under him spread out Jeez. across North America. Mm -hmm. And Saturiona had about 30. Mm -hmm. But it's so they are important. Um, and just like every one of the other chiefs are important because you know that's only who we know. And the reason why we know them, I would say that it's more important for black people mm -hmm. to know of Saturiona and a lot of Atina because this is where we really get the first encounters. This is when the the Spanish and the French first get in North America. Mm. And this is who they encounter in Florida. You mm. feel me? So this is like the entry point to the history that we haven't been exposed to or privy right. to. You know what I'm saying? So just so happens the Spanish and the French, this is really big history for them because this is the new world to them. Like That's they're right. running from religious yeah. persecution. They trying to be mm -hmm. free. They trying to get more resources. Mm -hmm. So Spain and France, this is what Spain and France is teaching their population. Wow. We're learning British history. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because we're under England right now yep. and all of that. We don't, The Great Britain has no reason to teach us what Spain went through or mm. what France went through when they got That's here. So yep. we learn their version of history, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. we don't really focus on that. So it's crazy because this is like the smoking gun, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like we are the population of people that have been told for so long that oral, oral tradition, might, might, might I add, for, for so long that we have Indian on our family or for our, sure. yeah. our, um, our grandmothers or our great aunties was Indian or your great grandfather was an Indian or whatever. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, we played the telephone game and now we all confused on what we originally heard back then. Right. Because right, right. we think from, cause we, you know, the, the, the U S government really got their hands on academic academia and what is told or in the schools, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, we are confused by that different narrative that's taught in the school system from what we are hearing at home. So mm. now we think that, oh, we are mixed. We really sound mm. mixed or we got Native American in this. So we mix with these people over here yep. because we was really slaves and mm. and we, you know, we ran away from the plantation and they housed us and we adopted their culture. That's what we think we the relationship was, but mm -hmm. our great, great grandfathers that was our great, great aunties or whatever, when they were saying we was Indian or we was Cherokee or we was Blackfoot, mm -hmm. they really was talking about these Mississippians mm -hmm. that look just like us right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Back then, because 
1562, this right here, like this, the way this dude look in 1562, right. 1619 is right around the corner. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah. yeah. And um, supposedly when slavery is supposed to be cracking off, you know what I mean? So we got that slave. We still got the the idea that we were slaves and we still got the idea that we was Indians, mm. but they tricked us though. They for real, for real tricked us on the Native Americans because they explicitly say like in the field of archaeology that the Mississippians are a different population of people than the Native Americans, mm. quote unquote, classified by the U.S. government. Right. You know what I'm saying? These Native Americans is not mound builders. They mm. not said they not having effigy mounds. They not mm. having like these different platform pyramid mounds that's aligned with certain constellations and stuff like that and having different agricultural systems and mining silver and gold from the Appalachian Mountains and stuff like mm. that. So, you know, we kind of really confused on what Indians we were because we mm. definitely wasn't. I was told that I, you know, by my aunties and my great grandmothers and all that, that I'm Indian, I'm Blackfoot, I'm Cherokee, yeah. mm. you know what I'm saying? And uh, none of my family members look like no Native American. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, but yeah, I think to get back to your question, uh, this right here, like this for us is really important because mm. it allows us to see where we've been lied at. You know That's what I'm right. saying? Because like, if you look, oh, I'm gonna I'm just stop it right there. I'll let you go for it. Oh, look, Mouse. Hey, listen. Today you can cook, bro. You can cook. Okay, you good? Sure. You ain't gotta worry about slowing down. Hey, you got for more sure. than enough time, brother. For sure. For sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But on that standpoint, right? My follow up question to that. So it was actually perfect timing. Mississippians, right? Seeing you actually draw that line in your lecture that you sent over, because we've been taught about Indians, Native Americans. What's the difference between a Mississippian and someone saying Aboriginal, Indian, Native American? Oh man, that's a good question, man, for sure. Thanks. So like, that's the thing right now, you know, I think we kind of chopped it up briefly about like the different communities that's in uh, the, the what what do you call it conscious community right you know what i'm saying so right now the people that are speaking about us being from north america they mm -hmm. got these different titles for themselves yeah. that really yep. kind of invalidate what they saying yeah and yep. they they really are i mean their position is correct if you really do the scholastic knowledge on it and really mm. go and do the field work and really mm -hmm. talk to the archaeologists really get the data you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Really go to the primary sources, but utilizing terms like, oh, I'm indigenous, I'm indigenous American or I'm Aboriginal American. Mm. Like that don't tell me nothing. It mm. don't tell me where you from at all. It just tell mm. me that you first to one of the Americas, which is mm -hmm. North, Central or South. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, say. Uh, when you when you really start naming things correctly so say like when you're a european right mm -hmm. you're european but you can't just be a you you can't you can't tell me you're indigenous european it's european yes like yeah. what the heck what is yeah. that you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah you either from ireland which yeah. is irish or you from scotland which is scottish or you mm. from you know poland which is polish mm. you know what i mean but us over here we we don't consider north america as mississippi which it mm. is though mm. because mississippi deals with the the great river mm -hmm. the mississippi river that like runs north and south and like mm. has a watershed that spreads mm. into other states mm -hmm. that gives resources and everything to other states yep. so this is like mississippi you know what i'm mm. saying mm. so from the great lakes to the gulf and then from east to west the, the Mississippi River is providing resources to this landmass. Um, so, uh, Dan, to get on my point, um, Mississippian is in archaeology. These are the groups of people that are Chickasaws, Choctaws, Cherokees. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So if you, if I'm talking to you, 
and you tell me you Mississippian, I'm going to be like, oh, for real, where you from? You know what I'm saying? You're like, I'm from, I'm from Choctaw country. I'm from yeah. Chickasaw country. I'm from Cherokee country. And I know exactly where you're talking about. Are you from Georgia or Alabama? Yeah. Or are you from Tennessee? Or are you from, you know, you from Seneca country? Or well, are you from the Northeast? Mm. You know what I'm saying? We all Mississippians. Mm. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, we just got to think differently about that because, like, the Native Americans is a made-up terminology and group. These are, like, mm. people from Siberia, Mongolia, wow. you know, uh, Russia, that part of the world that had nothing to do with anything that was going on with this right here. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. So, Miss- the Mississippian terminology is the correct terminology for the group that is calling themselves uh fba mm. or calling themselves aboriginal indigenous american or whatever that is you know what i'm saying that's the correct terminology for us to even proceed like on a legislation type of level mm. you know what i'm saying where we actually go in and we repatriate because right mm. now we're talking about reparations mm-hmm. or uh what are the other terminologies but we had no nation you know what i'm saying yeah, civil like, rights civil rights you know yep. what i'm saying yep. so when people talk about like reparations you also have to know what nations harmed who hmm. and then getting deeper into that repatriating is hmm. when you get back to who harmed who and hmm. who was actually who you know hmm. what i mean so yeah you know that's that's a that's a that's a thing that we need to address like immediately, really. That that terminology that we use, because when we use black, when we use African American, that's all forfeiting everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Forfeit your history, it forfeit your land. First of all, if I'm say if you if you Korean and you just want to say I'm I'm yellow, you know, mm. then there's no Korea. <laughs> yeah, there's no land there's no korean culture there's it's no all korean erased. food you yeah. know what i'm saying it's yeah. all gone after that and it's replaced yeah. with a color mm. you know what i mean so yeah for sure that's a uh, that's something we got to hit on real like quickly because mm-hmm. the community be like cannibalizing itself mm-hmm. where they be like oh y'all wrong yeah and um you know the indigenous american community quote unquote yeah it's like that terminology is wrong, even though if you are kind of right about the history, like we we can make a lot of moves if we just get real political and real historical about the situation and remove like all the different um, ideologies that we have. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying?